Hi, this is Aditya and welcome to my channel. In this video, I am going to talk about the role of OHJI containers in Adobe Experience Manager. This video is part of the Adobe Experience Manager tutorial playlist, the link for which I will be giving in the description box. If you like the videos which I am doing, please hit on the like button and please subscribe to my channel. Let's get started with the presentation. Okay, so this is the AEM architecture which we are trying to understand. So if you see here, the Apache uh, Jackrabbit Oak, which is the JCR repository uh, and the Apache Sling and AEM layer, all of these are present inside this uh, OSJ Java container. So what is a container? Okay, so container as its uh, name suggests, it contains something. And in this case, it contains all the Java classes. So all the Java classes related to this JCR repository, Apache Sling and AEM are present as part of this OSJ container. And Apache Felix is just the UI to manage all these classes. So let us try to understand as to why we are using OSJ Java container specifically for this AEM purpose. Okay, so the main purpose of the OSJ container is to maintain the modularity. So AEM is an application which is developed based on the principles of modularity and OSJ has the specifications or best practices as to how that modularity can be achieved. Okay, so the main purpose so why we are using the OSJ is to maintain the modularity. So to understand OSJ, first we need to understand what is modularity. Let's try to understand that. So this is how the situation was when we were doing the procedural oriented programming or structured programming uh, just like any language like C programming right so wherein let us suppose there is a developer 1 here and developer 2 so the developer 1 is writing code on his own and developer 2 is writing code on his own like two different files let us suppose and both are working for a particular project to develop a particular application let us suppose and let us suppose once these people have developed these codes they will merge these their codes into a main program and let us suppose from that main class they will execute the functions which are defined in these individual files okay if we take an example of c programming we can just use hash include and then we can include any of the file name right so in that way we can include these two file names into a main file and call the function names which are defined by these individual developers but when we merge these two files we will face some problem that they can use the same function names because these two developers are working on their own there is every possibility that they might have used the same function name and also they might have used some same variable names so once we merge this code into one file we will get all these con conflicts and compilation issues so the idea here is how can we modularize the application so that these developer can work individually on their own and when they merge their code there will not be any conflict so to achieve that we landed upon something called as object oriented programming okay so in object oriented programming what will happen is this developer one will work on one class and this developer two will work on another class which is class two here and he defines his own attributes which are variables in this class and he also defines uh, the functions in this particular class and this guy all and this developer also does the same thing like he develops his own variables and his own function names and in the same way as we did in the procedural or procedural oriented programming we can also merge these two classes into one main class and we can create the objects for these classes and we can start calling these function names so in this case if we can observe though the function names are same there will, in, there will not be any error while compilation because we are referencing this function name using the object which is initialized with this particular class so we'll say class 1 dot function name and class 2 dot function name so in that way these two are being distinguished and even the variables if we have to access the only way to access it is using the object which is initialized with, the, with this particular class name. In that way, we have achieved a certain amount of modularity. So that allows these two developers to work on their own individually and be able to merge the code without having any compilation errors. 
and we also have a feature in java like uh, we can define uh, the function name as public and private public and private so what it allows us to do is uh, if we define the function name as public then this function name can be accessed even outside this particular class okay so in the main class if i have to access this function name if it is declared as public then i can access that particular function name but if something is declared as private then i can access that function name only in this particular class and i will not be able to access it outside it so these are the access controls which we have as part of the java which which will allow us to achieve certain modularity and which will allow the developers to work on each of the module individually or each of the class individually but this also has certain problem like let us suppose this developer has worked on some 10 classes and let us suppose he has bundled that into a jar and now the developer one wants to import that particular jar and use a particular class like for example class 2 in this class 1 so this is how it looks like okay so let us suppose this is the developer 2 and he has defined these classes and he has bundled all these classes into a jar so let us suppose this particular developer 1 wants to use a class in this jar 2 in in this class then what he will need to do first is he will have to add a maven dependency in this jar which is jar 1 he'll add the maven dependency that uh, there is a dependency on this particular jar then this jar gets downloaded onto this project library and then this developer will import the class from this jar to a particular class from this jar to and then he will initialize that class into a object and then he'll be able to call a function name inside this particular class okay so that is how we are able to access it but if we see here there is a problem that let us suppose there are some 10 classes in this jar too now is there any way that this developer can say that only three classes can be accessed by this developer one and not other classes there is no way like that once the jar is imported and if it is part of the class library then what happens is this developer one will have the ability to access any class in this particular jar so there is no restriction as to which class he can execute and which class he cannot execute that is one thing and the second thing is every time there is a change in the classes in this particular jar then this developer one has to re-import this jar and then he might have to change some of the code here also if there is any dependencies which are breaking like some of the code or function name might get changed here because of which this developer's code stops working and then he has to refix everything again so these are the problems which we are having when we are using jar or var concept so in order to fix all these issues we are using osj configurations let us suppose developer one is working on this OSJ service or component and let us suppose this developer two is working on this particular OSJ service or component okay so now what is this OSJ component so it could be a bunch of uh, classes which are bundled together or it could be a bunch of jars which are bundled together it could be anything so now let us suppose some of the classes in this particular component are dependent upon other classes which are available in this component then in the earlier scenario we used to declare an import statement here and then we used to import it right so that is called as a tight coupling so in this concept what happens is this particular osj component instead of directly importing a jar from this component it will ask this message broker or service registry service so it will ask this message broker and it will send a message saying that i want this class to be initialized okay so then this message broker it is a job of this message broker to initialize this particular class in this osj component and then inject or pass on that particular object into this components class so the idea here is these two components osj components are not directly dependent on each other 
but they are indirectly dependent based on this message broker. So what is the advantage of this particular architectural pattern? Each component will specify what are classes it is importing and what are classes it is exporting. Okay, so let us suppose it is importing two classes which are from two different components or two different OSJ components. Okay, and it is exporting another two classes from this particular component. So now what happens is this OSJ framework has the ability to check what are classes this particular OSJ component is importing. It will check that first and then it will see in which OS, in which other OSJ components these classes are present. Okay, so let us suppose we have two other OSJ components here and they are present in those OSJ components, those classes are present in those OSJ components and they are being imported into this component. Okay, so then it will check if those components are active or not and if those components are working properly or not and if they are working whether those components are exporting that class or not and if they are exporting the class then this message broker will just initialize those classes and then pass it on to the object reference which is there in this particular class. Okay, so each and every component will be talking to this message broker and they will not be talking directly. So because of that what happens is if any of the service is down, if any of the OSJ component has some code issue and it is down, then this message broker knows exactly as to which other components are dependent on that particular component which is not active or which is not working properly and then it will have the ability to also put other components which are dependent on hold. So the idea here is we are not stopping the entire application but we are just stopping certain modules from working. So the other modules can work as usual but only the only the modules which are dependent on a non-working module will also be not working. So to achieve this kind of modularity and to manage all these things we use OSGA framework in Adobe Experience Manager. We also can create the new OSGA services the details of which we will see in much later videos. Thank you.